Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on the series Human Eye and the Colorful World. And now in this video we will be discussing two concepts that is power of accommodation and eye defects. So we'll start with power of accommodation then we'll move on to eye defects. Now in power of accommodation, what is basically power of accommodation? Now in the last video I told you about the mechanism of how light enters the eye and how images are formed, how images are seen, etc. But what is power of accommodation, right? For example, you have an object placed here, right? Suppose at uh, here and this is one fixed position A at which you are placing an object. Now there is an eye here. Okay. There's an eye here. I'm not drawing the full anatomy. I'm just drawing an eye. And it sees the object. So the object reflects light and it sees the object. Okay, that's one thing. Now, suppose this is at a distance of x, right? x centimeters, right? Now, that same object is placed again at A only. But there is some other person who looks at that object from a farther distance. Okay. Or let's say the same person looks at it from a farther distance. Still light will go here. But to focus on that object, the eye lens will have to change. For example, here the eye lens is like this. It had some particular focal length, right? But retina is fixed. Retina is fixed. So when light comes here, it will focus the light on the retina. But now here, the distance has increased. So the eye lens will have to change its focal length. The eye lens will have to change its focal length because the light rays incoming will be different. So what will it have to do to focus on a far off object? It will need to decrease or increase its focal length. It will need to decrease its focal length. So decrease its focal length so that it still focuses on the retina. So if you see here, the eye lens can change its focal length with the help of the ciliary muscles. Okay. So with the help of its ciliary muscles, the eye lens can change its focal length in order to focus on nearby and far off objects. So that is why we say that this property of the eye lens to change its focal length accordingly to focus on nearby and far off objects is called the power of accommodation of the eye. So if you want to define the power of accommodation, power of accommodation is nothing but, power of accommodation of the eye is nothing but the ability of the eye the ability of the eye lens to change its focal length the ability of the eye lens to change its focal length with the ciliary muscles with the help of the ciliary muscles To focus on, to focus on near and far objects. Okay, so that ability of the eye lens is called the power of accommodation of the eye. The ability of the eye lens to change its focal length with the help of the ciliary muscles to focus on near and far objects. Clearly, you can say clearly too. Okay, and in order to make sure that the light coming from them focuses on the retina only. Clear? So this is called the power of accommodation of the eye. Right? Now sometimes this power of accommodation has some defects. There are some problems or the eye has some defects. Okay? So there are some defects. There are some problems which an eye can face. Okay? Because of certain factors. Now we are going to study those eye defects. Okay? In our course, we have three main eye defects. In 10th standard course, there are three main eye defects. 
first is myopia okay second is hypermetropia or hyperopia it is also called in america it is called hyperopia and third is your not astigmatism there is a, an astigmatism also but we don't have that we have presbyopia there is also something called astigmatism but that is not in your course okay we have these three eye defects myopia hypermetropia and presbyopia okay we're gonna take them one by one and i have a figure also on the side so we'll consider that once we are done right let's first start off with myopia Now, myopia is commonly called short-sightedness. Okay, it is called short-sightedness. So, it is an eye defect in which the eye can focus on near objects clearly or nearby objects clearly. but is unable to see far off objects but is unable to see far off objects clearly right unable to see far off objects clearly so basically the eye lens right there are two points of the eye lens there are so two very important points first is the near point and then is the far point the near point of the eye is the shortest distance at which an op at which the eye can see objects clearly the shortest distance at which the eye can see objects clearly if you bring it closer than that you cannot see right and for a normal human being it is 25 centimeters for an average adult human being it is 25 centimeters the far point is the farthest point till which an, uh, an eye can see objects clearly. The farthest point. And for an average human being, the far point is infinity. You can see up till infinity for an average human being. But in myopia, the near point is fine. Okay, it's 25. But the far point comes closer than infinity. Okay, that means the far point is no longer infinity. You cannot see till very far off. It comes a bit closer to you. Uh, the far point comes closer than an infinity. It comes to a particular point. After that, you cannot see far off objects, right? So that is called myopia or short sightedness. You can see short things close to you, but you cannot see things far away. Okay, now this is the basic idea. This is the basic defect. Now let's have a look at the causes. Causes are, number one, the elongation of eyeball. Elongation of eyeball. The eyeball gets elongated. Okay? Elongation of eyeball. And second is excessive curvature. Excessive curvature of focal of eye lens excessive curvature of island so first is elongation of the eyeball the eyeball elongates and second is excessive curvature of islands the islands has too much curvature it's too it's really curved okay now what happens as a result what happens in myopia the incoming light rays right when they pass through the islands they are going to focus before the retina they are going to focus before the retina not on the retina they will focus before the retina. Light rays focus before the retina. Okay, so that is your myopia. Light rays are focusing before the retina. And because of and it is because of the elongation of eyeball, eyeball has become too elongated, retina is too far off, it focuses before, and excessive curvature of eye lens. The focal length of the eye lens reduces due to which there's ex and it is because of ex ex excessive curvature of the eye lens. Okay. Now the correction. How can it be corrected? Okay, very simple thing, right? 
it can be corrected with a concave lens corrected with a concave lens so using a concave lens you can correct myopia okay so this is what is myopia this is the causes of myopia this is the correction of myopia I can focus on nearby objects clearly but is unable to see far off objects. It's because the light rays focus before the retina. Causes are the elongation of the eyeball and excessive curvature of eye lens. Correction corrected with a concave lens. Okay. So let's have a look at the figure of myopia. So this is a normal eye where the light rays are coming in and they're going to focus onto the retina after refraction, right? They're focusing on the retina. But if you come to myopia, and this is dreamstream.com. I've downloaded it from here. So the light rays are going to come, and here they are going to refract from the eye lens. And you can see here the eye lens has excessive curvature. Can you compare it to the normal one? It has some slight excessive curvature. And because of that, it is going to come, and the, the eyeball is much longer as well. Can you see that? Compare it to the normal eye, it is much, much more elongated. So now it is going to focus before the retina. See here. It's supposed to focus here, but it is focusing here before the retina because of which you cannot see uh, far off optics clearly. Right? So this is myopia. This is the diagram for myopia and the correction. This is how it's corrected. You keep a concave lens. So when a concave lens is kept, again, it first dis diverges a bit, right? Because you know, concave lens diverges. Uh, light rays. So it diverges a bit first. So when it actually reaches the transparent cornea, it undergoes bit of refraction and then ultimately when it enters the eye lens, it is going to undergo proper refraction and ultimately it is going to converge onto the retina. Right? This diagram is also important. They ask you to draw a diagram sometimes. Please remember this ray diagram. It's important. Right? So I hope that's absolutely clear to all of you. This is your myopia. Now let's come to the next eye defect in our course that is hypermetropia. Hypermetropia. Now hypermetropia is the complete opposite of myopia. In this, eye is unable to see nearby objects clearly. So you are unable to see objects which are near to you clearly. Nearby objects you cannot see clearly. And this hypermetropia is also called long-sightedness. Long-sightedness. Okay. So eye is unable to see nearby objects clearly. Far off objects you can see clearly. But nearby objects you cannot see clearly. Right. And why is it caused? It is because the light rays converge after the retina so it is converging behind the retina or you can say behind the retina before um, before this we were doing myopia there they were converging before the retina but there they are converging after the retina behind the retina right so this is hypermetropia it causes long sightedness you are unable to see objects near to you now the causes again there are two main causes first is the shortening of eyeball. So again, opposite of myopia, shortening of eyeball. Eyeball becomes short, it, be, it shrinks. So shortening of eyeball. And the second is increase in focal length. Increase in focal length of eye lens. Of eye lens. Right? So these two are the main causes of hypermetropia. Shortening of eyeball and increase in focal length of eye lens. Okay. Now, correction. We use a convex lens. Using convex lens. Because they are going to converge the incoming light rays a bit before they enter the real eye lens. And then ultimately, they are already a bit converged. So, they'll converge even more. And then they'll converge at the retina. Finally, right? So, this is hypermetropia. Okay, so if you look at the figure of hypermetropia, so this is the normal eye, it's going to converge add to the retina. And then in a hypermetropic eye or hyperopic eye, the light ray is going to converge after the retina. See, it's converging here. 
where it's supposed to converge here, but it's converging here, right? So we use a convex lens and you can see that now finally after using a convex lens, it's already converging a bit. And then finally when it enters the eye lens, it will converge even more and then it is going to reach on to the retina to form a proper image, right? And then you can even see near objects as well as far objects clearly, right? So that's absolutely clear. This is a convex lens. Con convex lens, right? And we use that to fix hyperopia, right? So I hope that's absolutely clear to all of you. That's for your hyperopia. Now let's come to the last defect we have in our course and there's no ray diagram for it. So let's just get it done quickly. The third one is presbyopia. Now, presbyopia basically is an eye defect, which is which is basically in which one cannot see near or far objects clearly. You cannot see near or far objects clearly. There's a problem. And it's because the ciliary muscles, they really, really get weak. So what is the cause? Causes because ciliary muscles weaken, ciliary muscles weaken as a result of old age. Okay, so as a result of old age, the ciliary muscles get weak, and because of their weakening, the person is unable to see near or far objects clearly, right? So that's a problem that happens, right? So that's the problem. You cannot see either nearby objects or far objects clearly. So it's because of old age, right? So what is the correction? Correction is pretty simple. You use, because there is both hypermetropia and myop myopia, it's kind of a combination of the two. So we use a bifocal lens. Bifocal lens. And this is a combination of Concave and convex lens. Okay. Combination of concave and convex lens. And you get a bifocal lens. Using a bifocal lens, you can cure presbyopia. Correct presbyopia and you'll be able to see nearby as well as far off objects clearly. Right? So I hope that's absolutely clear to all of you. And with this, we conclude this lecture on power of accommodation of the eye and eye defects. I hope that's absolutely clear to all of you. Thank you very much for joining me. Goodbye.